you're managing your small hunting property for deer, you need a plan. Hello everybody, this is Nathan Nelson with Stillwater Outdoors. One of the things that I want to encourage you with this video is that doing willy-nilly habitat work on your property is a terrible idea. You need a plan, a system, a structure set in place so that every improvement that you make builds upon itself and makes the property work together as a cohesive unit. So my purpose for creating this video is give you my design and then hopefully you can then take some of the things that I've got with my property, maybe apply it to your hunting piece. To get the full picture of why I'm doing what I'm doing in my property design, first of all, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you watch this video that I already have posted on my YouTube. It is just the property advantages and disadvantages for my 18 acre habitat series. So the first thing that I want you to notice about my property design is the boundaries. That's what I have to work with. And as you might notice, the purple area, that is where my driveway is and where my yard is. The white areas, those are areas that are ash swamps. So the one on the left here, this is a, I actually call it the drainage, but it's an ash swamp that kind of filters through and you'll see the small uh, little line there, the, the white area that goes through my property and that's almost like a crick, it's like a seasonal crick. The other white section there is another ash swamp as well and that is what I call the Scooby Swamp. <laughs> I got a weird name for it. But if you can see that here, it kind of filters through the property, through this little channel, and it works its way out the north side of my property. Before we get jumping into my habitat plan, is I want you to be able to see the, the topography, the structure of my property. If you look at these lines, these are only two foot elevations. So you can see that there's really not a whole lot of change in my property uh, in terms of elevation. So the number one goal that I have with my property is simply this. I need to create good food for the deer. That is the thing that's lacking most in my area. So I'm pretty confident that if I can get some good food source going on my property, it's really gonna draw in a lot of deer. So since food is my number one priority for my property, I'm gonna try to develop a system where the food source is the main hub on my property. With small acreage, you have to maximize every square inch of that ground that you have. So what I'm gonna be doing is I wanna put my main destination food source as close to the house as possible. If you look at this picture here, you'll be able to see that I have situated the main destination food source about 75 yards from the edge of my yard at my house. Now this destination food source, there's nothing fancy about it. It's one acre. Ideally, I would have liked to have made it in some sort of a design to you know, make it feel like it's a smaller food plot, but it's only one acre, so it really shouldn't be too bad. And as long as I'm not over hunting the food plot and making the deer feel pressured while they're there, I think that I should be able to establish a very good evening pattern for the deer herd coming to feed. So my second main goal with this property is that I want to make food sources that relate to each other. I want the deer to use the property in somewhat of a patternable way. So if you notice right above the main destination food plot, I've got this little U-shaped food plot. And what this food plot is designed for is to kind of filter the deer in to the main destination food plot. Give them just that, that la extra layer where they really start to feel comfortable moving through my property, entering into a smaller opening first, filtering their way through and then entering into the main destination food plot. Now anything that is going to be coming from the west, that's going to be going through this food plot that I have here over to the left. And uh, I'm just calling this the, the west entrance food plot. As you can see there's a trail that kind of leads through that food plot from the neighbor's property into my main destination food source. If you go to the southern or bottom end of my property, you'll notice that I've got this little small food plot that's situated right on the property border, right up close tight to the house. And this is a plot that I call the church plot. 
And so this plot is gonna be simply for those deer that are coming from across the road from the south. Go into that food plot and then they'll make their way headed towards my main destination food source. It's this food plot that is on the far eastern or right side of my property. And what that is gonna be there for is mainly three different purposes. The first purpose is that it's going to draw deer from the south across the road. The second purpose for this food plot, which I'm calling the pond plot, is that they're going to skirt from the neighbor's property, enter into this food plot. From the north, this is the third reason for this plot, is that it's gonna catch some does coming out of that small little bedding area that I have established there. They'll come down that trail, get a little nibble, and then they'll make their way into the middle acre food plot. Now, if we go a little bit further up towards the northeast corner of my property, you're gonna see this small little food plot here. And this food plot is simply just gonna be a small little staging area food plot that'll catch deer that are bedding from the north, coming through, filtering through my property, just another spot for them to kind of stop, spend more time on my property. I'm hoping that most of the buck bedding is gonna happen on the north side of my property or even outside of my property. That'll help me to be able to access all the different areas of my property without boogering all these bedded bucks and you know trying to cross all these trails that bucks are going in and out of. At the far northern edge of my property, I have uh, a pipeline that goes through and this is one that I'm still a little bit unsure what I'm gonna do with back here, but right now, currently, it's grown up a lot with a, a lot of warm season grasses, and it has, and I mean, they get up like chest high. I mean, so it's, it's a lot of cover, but there's really not as much food value uh, because the grass has overtaken it. So I've considered turning it into a food plot, but one thing that I'm tossing around at this point is maybe going in and killing all the grasses and turning it into a, a native browse area for, for the deer uh, where there'd be a lot of good forage for them. And it would be fairly inexpensive to, to do that, just going in and spraying it. Now, if you look even a little bit further to the left now on the northwest corner of my property, I have the final food plot. And this food plot is gonna be there to catch deer that are still coming from a little bit from the west, but also deer that are coming from the north. Now, if you'll notice on this map here that I have laid out, there's a lot of yellow lines. And all of these yellow lines are deer trails, and they're, and they're deer trails that I am planning to create. So I'll make little natural openings that the deer can kind of, just, just to kind of help guide them through my property so it, it makes it a little more predictable for hunting. Another idea that I have for these deer trails is to do some mineral stumps along the way. You know, every once in a while, just have a tree that's cut down, you know, and it'll send up those shoots and those deer are gonna just pound that food. So it'll just help encourage them. I may even throw out a little bit of clover on those trails just to kind of give them a little extra incentive to walk that path. So literally, after you look at this, that main acre food plot, the middle acre plot, is like the center wheel. And everything that happens is spreading off of this. And, and anything going in and out of the property should hopefully be coming to my main food source or going somewhere around that area. This should hopefully make the deer patterns more predictable for hunting. And this leads perfectly into my third priority, which is this. I want to make the property huntable. So the first thing that I did to make this property huntable is that I have designed a perimeter trail that goes around the far edges of my property borders. And I wanted to do this because I want to have an easy, quick, efficient system to be able to access any area of my property. So off of this main trail, you're gonna see that there are these little small trails that kind of jut into the woods. And what these are for is little trails that are gonna to lead to my stand locations. The cool part about this system is that it's gonna help me be able to skirt around the entire property, keep the center of my property undisturbed for the most part, and only barely just kinda of sneak in on the edges and get in within closing distance of those bedding areas, but yet still keep far enough away that I'm not really invading on that security that they want in those areas for bedding. Now, ideally, you'd want to make your trail system 
skirt all the way around your food plots so that there's no interaction with food plots and trails. And basically that's just helpful because you're not going to be walking through your food plot when you finish up your hunt and all of a sudden you bust out a bunch of deer that are there feeding. I wasn't able to work out all of that here with my property. As you can kind of see, I have to work, walk through my church plot and I have to walk through the pond plot. The only thing that I'm thinking that is going to be somewhat okay about this situation is I'm not quite as concerned about me bumping deer off of the staging plot as much as I am the destination food source. And you'll even notice uh, my, my west entrance food plot there. My trail is going to be going somewhat close to that so I may end up planting a visual barrier there alongside it. You can kind of see I put a white line along the edge of it. I may plant something or, or build something up or do something to kind of conceal my movement past that food plot. Now in terms of actually hunting this property, one of the things that's really cool if you build a system like what I have where the food is up close to the house you can literally step out your door. Some of these stands that I'm going to have are like 10 yards off of my actual yard. And then I can get up in a stand and be in good action for hunting. So this is a great system, I feel, for being able to hunt this. If you look at this uh, picture that I have here of my property design, you'll see all the different stands that I have laid out within just a short distance of my house. I'm not just going to be sitting on food sources and trying to pluck them off a food source. I'm going to be trying to develop a pattern of travel through the property that I can set up off of the food sources, be able to be 15, 20, 30 yards off of the trail that they are mostly going to be walking on, and then catch them before they even know what's happening. The final thing that I really want to try to accomplish on this property is to create areas that the deer would feel comfortable bedding in. But one of the things that Jeff Sturgis always encourages people to do is try to get the does to bed as close to the food source as possible. And the reason behind this is that you maximize the depth on your property. You can make that feel like there's more area for bucks to bed on your ground. So if you look at my property, I've designed this so that bedding is really close to that main destination food source. If you look at just north of my central staging food plot, you're going to see that there are these three uh, teal areas. And those are areas that I'm going to try to make these little pockets where it's just thick, dense, good cover, lots of browse. Um, that's going to be areas where I want the does to bet. And then if you go a little bit further back, I'm going to try to create a couple more little pockets. And hopefully what will happen is, is that I'll be able to hold a couple different doe family groups amongst those uh, little pockets of cover and maybe even be able to hold a small buck or two. If you go down to the southwest corner of my property, you're going to see in and around that ash swamp, I'm going to try to put a little bit of some pockets of bedding as well in there. The thing that I got to be kind of somewhat careful though about this area is that it's close to my access trail. The main bedding area though that I want deer spending most of their time is going to be the one that is right in the center of my property, just north of my main destination food source. Ideally, I would like the big bucks to bed on my property, but with the limited acreage, there's no guarantee that they would. Now they might bed in some of those areas that I set up, but I'm anticipating that the bucks are gonna bed mostly on the outskirts of my property, maybe on the neighbors somewhere, or um, maybe even just on the far northern edge of my property. If I can get those does close to my food source, that'll mean that there's more ground freed up for the bucks to bed closer to my property, which means that I've got a better chance of hunting them in daylight. So this by no means encompasses every aspect of my plans for my property, but it should give you at least a good idea of why I designed things the way I did and how I designed it. A couple things that I'll probably inevitably do, there's gonna be openings uh, to get the canopy, you know, opened up so that, so that you can get some native browse on the ground and, and be able to produce more food, food for them. Uh, another thing is that I'm planning to use a no-till food plotting system for my food plots. Uh, it's going to be, you know, more of a system where I um, 
just broadcast the seed into uh, vegetation that's already growing, have that vegetation be killed or crimped or rolled or something. Uh, I still haven't completely figured out exactly how I'm going to do that, but I want to build up the soil in all of these areas and, uh, and hopefully be able to have a good system set up for the deer. I want to create this semi-open slash dense bedrooms. The rage, the whole rage of the... Um, you know, hinge cut trees. I, I mean, I'm probably not going to do much of that, but only in strategic spots. And they're all going to be low level hinge cuts that are going to give good side cover. Um, and they will probably have to be maintained over the years. Um, but I'll probably do a lot of more, almost like the mineral stumping style of bedrooms, uh, where you just cut down the tree and let that fresh vegetative growth come up. Uh, the main reason why I would do a hinge cut is that I can instantly add cover the very first year that I do it. But I'm going to, uh, you know, for those first two years before that, that growth really gets going, I'm gonna probably have a, a hinge cut or two in each of those bedding areas just to give a little additional cover. The biggest thing that I'm trying to accomplish with all of this is a lot of diversity of habitat where there's change everywhere on the property and that not just change but but change that funnels the deer and 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 diversity that feeds the deer and cover that equals food. I want everything that kind of just works together as a whole that makes the deer feel like this is the best place to be in the whole area. What does this mean? for you. How could you start applying some different things? A couple things that I'd encourage you with is um, I think that the first thing that you need to do is just pull up a satellite imagery of your property. Get your property borders all lined out on that. You could use an Onyx map or base map or or something like Hunt Stand like what I'm using here and, and just start coming up with as many possible designs as you can. Think through all the pros and cons, why this should work, why this wouldn't work. How can I make this better? Uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, obviously you could hire a habitat consultant if you've got enough money to be able to do that. But um, if money's tight, just be diligent to think through things. If you just sit and think about it, you can do it. And obviously the second thing you could do is if you had any questions, don't, don't hesitate to uh, contact me. You can get a hold of me on Instagram or on Facebook at Stillwater Outdoors or you could uh, even just write in the comments below under this video and, and I'll, I'll do my best to try to answer those questions as best I can. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd encourage you to subscribe to this channel and make sure that you stay tuned for more videos to come.